he's coming back, a phrase that sends chills down the spine of many. But what if I told you that scientists have made terrifying new discoveries at the Jordan River that defy all logic? Yes, you heard that right. The Jordan River, the sacred site where Jesus was baptized, is once again at the center of a mystery that could change the course of history. Scientists are on high alert as they scramble to unravel the secrets of this bizarre phenomenon. The signs are clear, and the implications are staggering. So what does this mean for us? Let's delve into the mystery to find out the answers. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. The Jordan River continues its trek to the Dead Sea, which is where it comes to an end after it has passed through the Kinneret. It is the setting for a great many of the key events that occurred in the Bible. Nevertheless, when the vast majority of Christians think of the river, the first thing that springs to mind is the scene of Jesus Christ being baptized by John the Baptist. This is a central event in the Christian faith. After the Nativity Grotto in Bethlehem and the Golgotha in Jerusalem, the Jordan River is considered by Christians to be the third holiest site in the Holy Land. This ranking puts the Jordan River slightly behind the Western Wall in Jerusalem. This is due to the fact that the Jordan River was the site of the most significant event in Jesus' life, which was the beginning of his ministry as well as his baptism. Therefore, it is fitting that the Jordan River be named after him. John the Baptist was the one who first proposed using the Jordan River as a location for religious rituals such as baptisms. Residents of Jordan, one of the driest countries in the world, have long since gotten used to the fact that their homes receive a supply of water for an average of around 36 hours each week. This is because Jordan is one of the countries with the lowest annual precipitation. However, as of late, even that pathetic flow has been halted due to the devastating combination of a warming globe and an expanding demand for the resource. This has resulted in the flow being stifled to an unacceptable level. One of the numerous people who schedule their days in this fashion is Raja al-Bawabji, who is 64 years old and resides in Amman. She is one of the many people who do this. She is a human rights attorney throughout the week, but on Fridays she changes into a domestic marathoner, furiously cleaning, washing clothing, and making three substantial meals during the little window of time when the water flows. She does this while the water is running. In spite of this, some parts of this small nation in the Middle East, which is in the midst of a severe drought, saw their domestic water supplies dry up for as long as three weeks during the summer of this year. At the beginning of the summer, when Miss Alwater Bawabiji's taps did not turn on as planned, she voiced her anxiety that there would soon be additional power outages. She remembers that everybody was anxious about the amount of water that was available. As a consequence of this, she made the decision to acquire a second tank for her home's rooftop and worked with some of her neighbors to divide the expense of getting water from a private firm that offered tanker services. After drawing a long breath out of her mouth, she said, if you want to feel free, you need three tanks, after which there was a little pause. In addition to the significant difficulties presented by Jordan's geography and topography, a damaged and inefficient infrastructure has only served to make the situation even more difficult. The current predicament is the result of multiple factors, including the expansion of the human population, diminishing water resources, and the impacts of climate change. Even though the country's major water sources are all situated close to its borders, it is still necessary to transfer water further inland. This is a procedure that consumes a significant amount of energy and is getting increasingly costly due to the ongoing increase in the price of fuel. There has been a significant decrease in the amount of rainfall over the course of the past few decades, and because temperatures have been rising, whatever precipitation that does fall quickly evaporates due to the rising temperatures. As a consequence of longer and hotter summers, the growing season that farmers have available to them has already been reduced. Motasem Saidan, a former water minister and current professor at the University of Jordan, has claimed, climate change is aggressively hitting Jordan in the last two years. Jordan has been hit hard by climate change in the last two years. There is a serious lack of water in the river from which this country gets its name. The Jordan River's average annual flow is now less than 10% of what it was historical, while the Yarmouk River, a key tributary, has a flow that is also drastically diminished. Once a raging river, 
the Jordan now slows to a trickle until it finally ebbs into the receding Dead Sea. Israel and Syria, both upstream countries, have used water for their own purposes for decades, making it impossible for downstream countries to share the rivers. Increasing supplies from these sources raises a number of complications, especially for Israel, which has lived in a fragile peace with Jordan for decades. An unhealthy reliance on extracting water from underground aquifers has resulted from all of these issues. 60% of the nation's water comes from aquifers, which are being depleted at a rate about twice as quickly as they can be refilled naturally. The administration is aware of the dangers of further diminishing the groundwater supplies, according to Omar Salome, a spokesman for the Ministry of Water and Irrigation. But as the population has expanded, the government has come under pressure to fulfill growing demand, he added. This is in no little part due to waves of migrants from Syria and other countries facing a crisis. The increasing number of people in the world is to blame. In total, there are currently more than 760,000 refugees, and of those, more than 760,000 have registered with the United Nations. Over 11 million people call this place home, up from an estimated 8 million just a decade ago. In his defense, Mr. Salome said, we do not have any other alternatives. Solutions and workarounds exist, but they are expensive and only accessible to the well-off. But the poor have no other option but to go without. Private water tankers provide drinking water for a sizable portion of the Jordanian population. Those tankers' prices, which are usually higher in the wealthier parts of Amman's capital city, reached new heights this past summer. Water is stored in tanks on top of buildings and homes and is rationed out weekly. The weekly refills of these tanks by the government are much appreciated. Those with higher financial resources may have several tanks, allowing them to supplement municipal supplies with water delivered by private vehicles. The absence of water has the greatest impact on those who are already struggling. People on lower incomes cannot afford to buy water from private trucks and they also have less space to store water. Each family must buy its own tank and even if one tank is broken into, the consequences will be devastating. Ibtissam Yusuf Abdul Rahman, 55, was born in the West Bank but now makes her home in the Widat refugee camp in Amman, southeast. Her family of husband, two daughters, and two grandchildren all live together in a little two-bedroom apartment. UNICEF helped them out with a brand new tank to replace one that had rusted and broken down during the epidemic. However, the UNICEF tank ruptured in the middle of the month of September, resulting in the loss of a great deal of extremely precious water. I started crying, she said, then I started running around the neighborhood. I'm worried because there's now no water. Since she can't gather enough to last the week, she's back to visiting each of her neighbors with a bucket in hand to ask for a drink. Her family has ceased doing their regular cleaning and has even stopped taking showers. While everyone washes their hands, she yells at them to use as little water as possible. The United Nations defines absolute water scarcity as a country with an annual per capita availability of less than 500 cubic meters of water. The situation is the same in Jordan. Mr. Salome estimates that it's close to 80. Desalination offers Jordan a chance for survival, but it will take time to implement. Aqaba, a city on the coast of the Red Sea, is planning to build a major desalination facility, but the project will take a long time to complete. One simple fix would be to increase water imports from Israel, a pioneer in the field of desalination technology. The peace treaty concluded between the two countries in 1994 included provisions for maritime cooperation. The deal was reached on Tuesday during a United Nations climate meeting in the Egyptian resort of Sharm el-Sheikh on the Red Sea. Protests erupted in Amman when the plan, negotiated by the United Arab Emirates and including the transfer of solar energy from Jordan to Israel in exchange for water, was initially disclosed a year prior. Because of Israel's occupation of Palestinian land, many Jordanians are also opposed to the idea of relying too heavily on Israel's water supply. However, Jordan's water supply is a major cause for national security concerns, as water shortages threaten to disrupt a stable Arab ally of the United States in a region rife with conflict. Former Water Ministry employee Iyad Dayat has compared the importance of the water portfolio to that of the military in light of the threats that climate change poses to Jordan. A new analysis predicts 
that by the year 2100, Jordan will face widespread water scarcity that is both severe and potentially unstable if the country does not make any meaningful changes. American expert and special advisor to the International Water Management Institute in Amman, Sandra Rukstuhl, said, The government needs to increase supply to communities to limit discontent. Rukstuhl participates in the IWMI as a full member. Several experts in the field, including Dr. Rukstuhl, have argued that the government should raise the price of water delivery to homes and businesses by indexing it to citizens' incomes. However, many Jordanians are already struggling with unemployment and rising costs, and the people would not welcome this as a burden to add to their already heavy shoulders. As the rate of climate change quickens, it is more necessary than ever for farmers in Jordan to make educated crop decisions and properly manage water resources. This is especially true as the speed of climate change quickens. This industry used to eat up over 70% of the country's total supply of fresh water despite the fact that it contributes a very modest amount to the country's gross domestic product. According to Mr. Salome, who serves as the spokesman for the administration, the fact that the percentage of those who use has reduced to somewhere around half is an encouraging indicator. However, the focus of many farmers is still on water-intensive crops, which are becoming increasingly difficult to cultivate as a result of climate change. Kai Redin Shukri is now in his 68th year and works as a consultant after retiring from the farming business. He has been an advocate for many years for the development of crops that demand less water yet offers a higher income for the farmers who grow them. He remarked that the issue with water is mostly one of planning, and he pointed to activities that are both inefficient and wasteful. He made this statement in reference to Jordan. It is a country with enormous potential but a lack of management. Many scholars believe that he may have been influenced by the Essens, who were living an ascetic lifestyle in the wilderness of Qumran or Ein Gedi at the same time as John. During this time period, John was also living in Qumran or Ein Gedi. One of the most important religious rites that they performed every day consisted of submerging themselves in water so that they might regain their spiritual purity. Because the water was constantly moving, those who wanted to immerse themselves in the Jordan River did so under ideal conditions. It is also common practice to refer to John as a precursor of Jesus, and the Gospel of Matthew names John as the one to whom the prophet Isaiah alludes to his prophecy when he says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. In addition to this, the arrival of Christ, who was also known as the Messiah, was announced by John the Baptist through the use of statements such as, I baptize you with water for repentance. On the other hand, someone more powerful than I am will come after me, and I am not worthy to carry the sandals that they wear. In addition to being baptized with water, you will also be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.